Hey, thanks for joining me. In today's video, I thought it'd be fun to address a question that I do get with some degree of regularity. And that is, can I connect two batteries together that have different rated capacities? And if we think about that in a series connection, when you add two batteries together in a series connection, you're connecting the negative of one to the positive of the other. And by doing that, you are actually adding up the, rel the voltages of these two batteries to create a combined system voltage. Now, if you're using a 12 volt nominal battery, it's gonna give you a 24 volt uh, system configuration. Um, now, what will happen is if, you, if these have different rated capacities, that one will discharge at a faster rate than the other, or should I maybe more accurately say, the smaller rated capacity will run out of uh, a battery or run below its, its critical voltage level faster than the other. In this case, this small one would essentially deplete itself and the BMS would shut it down while this one still has plenty of capacity left. And since they are connected in series, that breaks the series connection because now you no longer have uh, the, the complete connection going through the system. And you've effectively limited the higher capacity battery to only being able to output what the lower capacity battery is. And that is why it's super important to use not only the same uh, batteries of the same age, the same battery type, and also the same rated capacity because you want those to deplete at roughly uh, as close to the same rate as possible so that you don't overstress one battery much more quickly, shorten the overall system life, and reduce the overall capacity of your system. So the answer is no if you are using a series connection. But what if you're using a parallel connection? So parallel, just as a refresher, connecting the positive terminal of one battery to the positive terminal of the other battery, and then the negative to the negative. That's parallel connection. In that case, the total amp hours increases but the system voltage stays at 12 volts, assuming we're talking 12 volt batteries. So the batteries can actually be slightly different voltage when you connect them together in parallel because they will have a natural uh, tendency to equalize their charges. Now this is rated for a whopping 460 amp hours, which should equate to about 5,888 watt hours if I get the full capacity out of this battery. Now this one, as you might expect by the dramatic size difference, this one is rated for only 100 amp hours or roughly 1,280 watt hours. So if I add those together, I think I would get a, a maximum total output of about 7,168 watt hours. And that would be the best case scenario. Now, if I'm gonna do a capacity test on this through an AC inverter, which is what we're gonna do, we should get about 90% of that 7,168 watt hours. So that should net us around 6,400 watt hours if we assume maybe a 90% a efficiency loss converting from DC to AC through our AC inverter. So we are gonna go ahead and try that and see if we can get at least 6,400 watt hours, even though these batteries are dramatically different capacity. I mean, this is literally less than a quarter of the capacity than this one. So let's find out what actually happens. All right, to make our parallel connection, we're going to uh, try to keep these as close together as we can. I've got a couple of cables here that I've got for a, a positive and a negative connection. So I'm gonna, again, hook the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative. So first, let's do the positive. All right, now I'm not torquing these down all the way just yet because I do have to make the connection from the batteries up to the bus bar so I can power the inverter. But just real quick, Let's go ahead and check what kind of voltage we are getting if we go from the positive of this one to the negative of this one. And we are getting 13.26 volts. All right, before we make the battery connection, I'm gonna let these equalize for a little while, and then we'll hook my 12 volt charger up, make sure these are fully charged and topped off so that we get a fair representation of the combined total watt hour output that we actually get, just so we can see how that compares to our calculated value. Two hours later. All right. The uh, charger has shut off, telling me that we are at full state of charge. Let's just double check the uh, voltage once again. Negative, and we are getting 13.33 volts. So we're essentially fully charged as expected. All right, so we got all our connections here. Got the negative from this battery, going to the negative from this battery, and then I've got the other larger cable here going out to the bus bars to feed the inverter. And then I've got the positive from the big battery going to the positive to the small battery. And back here on the other side of a fuse, 
I've got the uh, red cable going up through my disconnect, which is currently in the on position. So we are going to go ahead and fire up the AC inverter. And I'm going to apply a load from an oil heater. And we're going to use this little watt meter here to log how many watt hours we actually get out of this kind of unlikely combination. And I think I've got that oil heater turned on already. So let's see what kind of a load we're going to pull. So we're a little over 1100 watts. Okay, so let's let this run all the way down until one of these BMSs or both of these BMSs shut down. And we'll find out how many watt hours we actually got out of this combined uh, 460 amp hour plus 100 amp hour battery combo. All right, it is clearly shut down and the inverter has got its low voltage alarm. Let me go ahead and shut that off. The display on the large battery shows 0%. There is no display on the smaller battery. But let me connect this watt meter here to grid power. All right, let's take a look and see what we got here. All right, if you can make that out, 6,370 watt hours. And we calculated our estimate was about 6,400 watt hours. So we pretty much nailed it. We were only 30 watt hours shy. So what does that tell us? Well, that does tell us that you are not losing capacity by connecting two very different capacity uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries in parallel. But there is one caveat that I would warn you. Uh, this battery has a maximum sustained rated discharge rate of 100 amps because of the BMS limitation in this battery, while as this one has a 250 amp BMS. So you do want to be a little bit careful about mixing and matching batteries that have significantly different BMS outputs. In this case, uh, I was only pulling about a total of 80 to 90 amps out of, uh, out of the system. So it was not a problem to distribute that across these two batteries. And uh, yeah, definitely not an issue. But if I were pushing, if I wanted to push this to the max and say get like a 200 amp uh, discharge rate, that might be a problem because this battery can't handle that. And the BMS would shut down and this battery would just not be able to handle it. But as long as your BMSs are fairly closely matched in terms of uh, sustained rated continuous output, you are perfectly okay connecting two batteries with different rated amp hour or watt hour capacity, provided they're both the same chemistry. So you want lithium iron phosphate with lithium iron phosphate, or you want lead acid with lead acid, but you wanna make sure that you're matching the battery chemistry. All right, so obviously you can definitely do that and you're not really losing capacity. You're not taking the smallest common denominator like you kind of are when you connect them in series. So you can definitely get away with that. Just be aware that the BMSs are dramatically different in terms of their sustained maximum continuous discharge rate. Uh, you might run into a small issue there, but as long as you're, you're not really pushing these things to their max or the difference in the BMS uh, discharge rate really isn't, isn't uh, any different at all, then I think you're totally fine in doing this. And it does make it easy to kind of add on as your budget allows if you maybe found a really good deal on a, on a battery that's maybe slightly bigger or slightly smaller than the other battery you're using. If you're connecting them in parallel, chances are you'll be just fine. So hey, if you found this helpful at all, please consider giving me a thumbs up. I'd very much appreciate that. Uh, thanks for joining me for this video. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have fun out there.